Hey folks, you want me to tell you why you never trust the Carfax? I'll tell you why. Yeah, I could definitely be wrong here, people, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that tube right there should not be bent up like that. There's no way. As pristine as the front end of this thing looks, or as pristine as it can look for a I don't know, what is it, 20-year-old car almost? That should not be bent up like that. So you definitely hit something, and it ain't on the Carfax. All right, people. This is my 2008 BMW 128 convertible. I've had this car for, I don't know, about five years or so. And uh, up until... Recently, I've always just taken it to a Beamer dealer to get the occasional oil change. Now, granted, I have only done a couple oil changes on this car in the five years that I've owned it because I've only put 7,000 miles on it. It has spent most of its life basically sitting, at least most of its life with me. Now, I bought this car from a dealer back in 2018, I think, maybe, 2019, 18, 19, um, for, I think it was nine grand or something, right? Got a halfway decent deal on the car. Had less than 100,000 miles on it. It's convertible. It was summertime. It was, you know, whatever. Clean car facts report. They gave me a six month warranty, all that fun stuff, right? So the car runs like a top. It still does, except it spent a lot of time in the last year and a half sitting. And when I say, I mean like the last year and a half, I mean, like since the beginning of 2021 up until three months ago, maybe two months ago, I put a grand total of about 40 miles on this thing, right? So the battery was dead and yeah, so it did a lot of sitting. So recently um, I have a really big truck, right? Diesel guzzler. And I decided I'm gonna start driving this thing a little bit, right? Uh, we missed the boat on the overpriced uh, used car prices and I decided to just keep it and have it as an extra vehicle and so it sat a lot so it needs some cleaning it needs some TLC um, anyway so I uh, started to notice recently a little bit of stuttering that it's been doing and you start with the cheapest thing first right mass airflow sensor maybe it's a little dirty it's been sitting right there might be a squirrel in the air box so I decide I'm gonna go and take the air box apart and so it's a kind of a process. There's no little snaps. You gotta take these little 10 millimeter bolts out. Of course they're 10 millimeter, right? It took me 15 minutes to find the socket because it wasn't in the damn case. And uh, so you gotta take the, unplug the mass airflow sensor, take, you know, hoses apart, take these snaps apart, uh, pull this box out, screws, which are T25, if I'm not mistaken, but I got the whole, the whole kit here somewhere um anyway so i start digging around now mind you i didn't buy this car as anything other than a toy right i had a beamer before they're they're fun little cars they're not too bad to work on if you know what you're doing to a point but i didn't really scrutinize this thing like i should have now i'm buying it from a dealer the dealer's giving me a warranty clean carfax report i drove it it ran great no smoke, wasn't burning any oil. Uh, I didn't think I really had to, you know, rip the thing apart or go digging. So today I decided I'm going to mess with the air filter, clean the, clean the sensor, see what we got going on there. I'm going to run it for a week or so and see if that resolves the problem. If not, new plugs, new coils, we'll start the throwing shotgun and parts at it until we solve the problem. So I get in here today with my clean Carfax, never been in an accident, beautiful BMW convertible. And I start looking down in here. Now, I'm going to feel like an idiot when I show this to you because uh, I should have looked at this. But who does? Who's When you got a clean thing and you're in a dealer, like you, you're supposed to have some trust in them, right? Six month warranty. So I go looking down in here and I notice something that doesn't appear to be something that should be in there. An old rag, and I can't quite read. It looks like I can reach it, but I can't reach it. It's a tight area, right? So this rag is down in there. 
that rag is, uh, you know, that's not OEM. So I start kind of really looking around at this car. And I start looking. Some things look okay. And, you know, there's no oil leaks. Nothing catastrophic. But if you get down in there and you really start looking down in there, you start to notice things that maybe aren't the shape that they're supposed to be. Like, yeah, we got surface rust and stuff, but, but that is not supposed to look like that. Somebody hammered on that, right? And something ain't adding up here because somebody stuffed a rag in there to protect something from chafing against hoses, right? That's what I'm seeing right there. But then I get over here and I start looking down at this and let's just say that has seen some better days. It's pretty clear that somebody beat the crap out of that with a hammer at some point because that's a round piece of tube that should kind of look like this, nice and clean, right? But it doesn't. That probably went nice and straight across at one point, and that hose might have even ran behind it. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that clean car facts or not, this car took a front end collision at some point. And it's pretty clear that that's pristine. That's probably not original. So don't trust your car facts. Get a mechanic to look things over. Actually spend the time to look inside the engine compartment, no matter how nice a vehicle may look. Now, this is after I've been driving it around. It's been sitting in the woods for freaking five years. But this is what I get for trusting a dealer and trusting the Carfax. So that's all I got. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. Maybe it's not quite as bad as it looked, right? So this is the airbox. The airbox got this little, you know, half moon shaped spot that needs to sit down on a little thing. They stuff this rag in here. I'm assuming to keep that from rattling because it goes around a little rubber boot right here. So maybe something wasn't quite tight, wasn't quite lining up. Um, but yeah, that's what we got. So just an old shop rag, somebody stuffed in there, who knows when, to uh, tighten up that gap. And since I don't like fire hazard rags to be sitting in here, this little stud they put in there that this little boot sits on top of, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna wrap this thing with rubber tape and Make it a little bit thicker so I don't have to leave a freaking fire hazard rag wherever I just toss that thing sitting in the engine compartment. Okay. All right, people. So we just went ahead and wrapped this thing with some electrical tape. I just, as you can see, I test fit this thing once. And it sits in there nice and snug. So when I go to put that thing down, hopefully we don't have any vibrations or any issues with it. We just kind of wrapped around the outside of it with some electrical tape. Hopefully that solves that issue. Hopefully we don't have any other issues. Um, got the sensor clean, got the air filter swapped out. So we'll get her back together and see what happens. Don't trust your Carfax. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely be wrong here, people, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that tube right there should not be bent up like that. There's no way. As pristine as the front end of this thing looks, or as pristine as it can look for a, I don't know, what is it, 20-year-old car almost, that should not be bent up like that. You definitely hit something, and it ain't on the Carfax. <laughs>